all speakers are in chat. Yeah, I know some of the speakers are in US or some of the speakers in, I mean, I mean China. So yeah, thanks for joining this seminar. So I will present some work about the uh, uh, numerical simulations of the two-phase flow. Uh, so basically I will focus on the uh, uh, FSI problems and also multi-phase problems uh, with the adaptive mesh requirement. So most of the work is uh, uh, from my PhD thesis. And uh, yeah, let me just, uh, uh, this is just some piece of myself and I am from the SJTU. And uh, if you have interest, just check my Google scholars and there are some uh, recent work. And this is my uh, group in University of Minnesota and my advisor is Professor Lian Shen. And along this process, of course, I received a lot of help from other people and other mentors or other collaborators. So um, let me just uh, share some um, background here. So actually two-phase problem um, exists, I mean, in many places, right? And you can find it in, I mean, not, not only in papers, in academic research, but also in many industrial applications. Um, yeah, this, this page shows you uh, one, two, three, four, four figures. And you can see uh, there are a lot of things related to the, uh, the two-phase flows, such as the breaking waves. And for the breaking waves, we have some uh, small droplets, uh, either jet droplets or film droplets between the air-water interface. And they, we also have some bubbles are generated uh, underneath the water and also some sprays, I mean, about water fins. And also we have some oil spills or cavitation problems, which you can see that, uh, I mean, it's not the single phase problems. And also the atomization problems where there are a lot of uh, jets or sprays are generated. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty normal to kind of simulate these problems. Uh, however, if you want to kind of capture these small structures, I mean, uh, if you use DNS, then uh, the computational load is very kind of expensive. Why we have to think some smart ways to simulate these problems. And also similar for the FSI, uh, air free swimming fish and the monomase, which may uh, uh, we motion of some water grasses and some renewable energy devices, which include the wind turbines, uh, wave energy converters, and the uh, uh, point of solver. I mean, these are all uh, uh, wave energy converters. So if you want to simulate them, uh, sometimes you have to uh, uh, resolve the fluid solid interface. Uh, first, uh, you know, that's the boundary layers uh, sometimes are very thin or have to capture them. Uh, yeah, so uh, on this information, let me just give you one uh, one specific exam examples. Mm. Yeah, so for this for this we've entered. Um, yeah, for this we've entered converter examples. Um, at this stage, I think if you want to simulate a large array of the wave energy converters, you cannot perform DNS uh, uh, due to the computational uh, limit. And uh, one of the ways to do it is just to try to refine your mesh around the wave energy converter, just like the uh, U and ES paper in, uh, in, this, in the right figure. Right, you have one, two, three, four, five, maybe five levels of mesh so that you can just put your uh, computational resources around the wave energy converter and also around the right two phase interface. Yeah, so that's uh, summarize the features of the adaptive mesh requirement. So basically, it uh, dynamically increase the resolutions in the places where you need it while leave the uh, general estimates in our regions. Yeah. 
So um, during my PhD studies, one of the objective is try to develop a framework so that uh, we have the features of adaptive mesh requirement. I mean, this is from kind of framework or maybe uh, uh, what we see the, the base part. But for the physics part, uh, we want to simulate the uh, uh, two phase flow problem and fluid structure interaction problems. Yeah, so that's that's my objective. And uh, I will try to give a kind of high level pictures of what I have done uh, uh, in my thesis. And uh, then I will spend uh, some time discussing each part about my thesis. Yeah, so basically, uh, uh, we have some what we call the block structure that have mesh requirement. Yeah, so basically, you can refine or de-refine your mesh across the different levels. I mean, that's the spatial part. And for a temporary advancement, uh, uh, you can use a stop cycling or you can use a non-stop cycling. Uh, I will I will try to explain these details later. So basically, these are two time advancement methods. And then, I mean, by combining with uh, some algorithm of the two phase flow and the uh, fluid structure interactions, then you can simulate the uh, maybe here is the bubble and droplets and also the uh, swimming yields. So uh, for the algorithm part, which I have marked at the center of this page, so uh, we have some inconsistent schemes uh, uh, that I published in this paper, and this, I mean. The, the left column, the in, uh, no, no, not the left, sorry. The, um, uh, the upper, upper row, the inconsistent scheme and consistent scheme, these are uh, two uh, methods or two algorithms that we are using to simulate the two phase flow. And the DLM, uh, I will explain it later, which uh, briefly means distributed Lagrange multiplier. I mean, the DLM, method and the sharp interface IB, uh, which are two methods, kind of two general methods which are used to uh, to simulate the uh, FSI problems. And of course you can combine, I mean, any two of them, right? So to, to uh, simulate the, maybe are very complex flows with uh, not only the two phases, but also the solid included. Um, yeah, I will start from the inconsistent scheme for the uh, uh, two-phase problem and then try to explain why we need uh, our algorithms and to maybe that's, I mean, that's the kind of the research kind of progress, right? You, I mean, you develop one algorithm, but that's not perfect. And then we try to update in some ways. Yeah, so yeah, hopefully this give you a, uh, kind of high level pictures of what I have done. And, and then I will go to the details for each part of this algorithm. Um, any questions or maybe any comments? Uh, yeah, feel free to stop me at any time because I would think this is a very great opportunity to exchange ideas instead of, I mean, I just present my. <laughs> my work. So feel free to interrupt me at any time. I mean, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, let me uh, just share the outline. So I will just give a, a brief introduction of AMR. And then for the two phase flow part, I will consider the inconsistent consistent schemes. And for FSI problems, I will focus on uh, DRM and sharp interface method. And then there are some conclusions and future works that uh, we can do uh, with the help of AMR. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, the adaptive mesh requirement is uh, is not a kind of modern technique. It was developed, I think, in 1984 and 1989. And there are very there are two uh, famous papers uh, which introduced this. Uh, 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 these techniques. And nowadays, there are two different types of AMR. Uh, one is the tree based AMR, and another one is block based AMR. 
And uh, yeah, if you ignore all these redundant words in, in the full, I mean the table below, just to focus on these two pictures. And you will find that, uh, uh, let me use a pointer here. Yeah, you will find that the for tree-based AMR, you see, right? Uh, if we have one grid cells, it is divided by uh, by the horizontal line and the vertical line, and then it become four cells. And then you can pick up each of these four cells and divide it again to another four cells. So you can think of it as a tree structure, right? Each, uh, each cell is a node of this tree. And uh, each node, if it can be divided, we have four children, right? These four children are another four cells for this grid. So that's, that's why we call this tree-based AMR. But for the block-based AMR, you can see it's not a kind of point-by-point -point refinement, right? It's just to uh, refine uh, some patches around the domains. So basically, uh, this is our two-dimensional figure. So we have some rec rectangular patches, and then we can move to the kind of next level, right? So, uh, so based, based, based on these two differences, this, this difference, and then you can compare the advantages and the shortcomings between these two methods. So for a tree-based AMR, you can do the point-wise refinement. I mean, you can, it seems that we can control everything, right? But for the, um, for a, a block structure AMR, or we call BS AMR, um, if you want to refine the point, you should uh, extend it to some paths, some regular path, rectangular paths. So that this that's one of the difference. And uh, um, uh, there's a there are some cons or shortcomings for the tree based AMR. I mean, in some papers it, it says okay the data structure is complicated, not easier for achieving good scalability. But I think that's not uh, uh, exactly the truth. At this stage, there are a lot of packages. Uh, which can achieve very great scalability that I will talk about later. And for the BSMR, you can think about it. Uh, sometimes might waste some, uh, right? Waste some kind of computational resources because let's see, you only want to refine one point, one cells, but you have to extend to a rectangular path, which means you waste your resources in other cells. Uh, however. Um, I think the block structured AMR is kind of uh, more easier for us to understand because I think most of the CFD codes, if you do not use AMR, if you use a structure mesh, that's just rectangulars. And then uh, it's easier for us to do the domain decomposition. And uh, you know, many kinds of solvers are based on this structured, uh, I mean, the, uh, the rectangular structure mesh. So that's why I finally choose the block structure adapt mesh requirement as my basis for my uh, for my PhD work. Uh, it doesn't mean that the tree based AMR is not good. Uh, I mean, it's, that's just one choice. Yeah. So I just uh, listed the uh, two types here. Uh, and of, of course, I if someone wants to learn the AMR, I think one of the good suggestions is uh, trying not to start from the scratch. I mean, there are already a lot of packages which helps you to, um, which helps you to, uh, kind of control the data flow or maybe data structures, or help you, uh, to manage the mesh or these things for you. So, uh, you you can see here, uh, I give a summary of features in the BSMR codes and framework. So uh, we have Catters, Enzo, uh, we have. Uh, we have this Junta and Chumbo and AMR EX, a lot of things here. Um, and these packages are pretty uh, uh, block structured. And uh, for the tree structured, I want to introduce two, uh, two famous packages and maybe some of the uh, some of listeners here are using them. So one of them is Jaris. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a packages. Uh, I think the first paper is 2003. And then now it's named as Barslix. And so it can simulate the two phase flows with a VOF method. And also, another uh, very famous framework is P4. Um, and P4 is kind of, uh, from my understanding, it's just a, uh, 
I mean, it's, it's agnostic to the uh, physics applications. So it's just her uh, uh, softwares, which helps you to manage your match, your grid cells in parallel. So it's pretty powerful. And I list a lot of reference here. So if you have interest in any kinds of, uh, uh, any kinds of packages, try to check their website and you will find a lot of information here. Yeah, so uh, what I choose, I choose a, <laughs> I choose the AMREX. So uh, the, yeah, so part of reason is it has some uh, kind of the, uh, very robust solvers in it. And also it has very good documentations uh, for, for the, uh, uh, for, for the, I mean, the for beginner, learn, for beginning learners. So that's why I choose it. And uh, yeah, so uh, we, uh, uh, our uh, BS AMR framework is based on AMR EX and it can dynamically change the grid resolutions in the places where I'm interested. And I also want to emphasize, uh, I use a collocated grid, uh, it, uh, not the staggered grid. I mean, uh, so in, in CFD there are, I think, uh, there are many different types of grid. Uh, the collocated and the staggered grid are two types that we mainly use, right? Uh, for the collocated grid, all the variables, I mean, include the velocity, pressure, scalar point, scalar, I mean, everything is defined at, at the cell center of, of the grid cells. Uh, for, um, for the um, uh, staggered grid, uh, we define the velocity at the phase centers, but put the pressure at the cell center. Um, yeah, so one of the uh, one of the challenges of the collocated grid it might lead to the checkboard uh, pattern of your simulations, but this can be kind of overcome. The, I mean, in different ways. Yeah, and also we have some flexible timing time stepping techniques. Uh, we have sub cycle and less sub cycle. And let's see. And the last feature is that let's see we have this this uh, kind of user-friendly uh, framework. Uh, I mean, theoretically, we can combine it with any different uh, uh, physical modules, right? I mean, you, if you have, so when, when we try to design this framework or use the AMR EX, I think the developers, the philosophy, or also one of my philosophies is, which should be easier for other people or other developers to use this framework to combine their kind of original codes. I mean, either in Fortran or in C++, they are single level codes uh, to embed it in this AMR framework so that they can, uh, they can simulate um, their problems in a very efficient way. So that's our uh, key ideas while design, our design these models or combine the physical models with the framework. Yeah. So uh, in this page, I also show some figures about the uh, uh, falling sphere or RT inspirations. Uh, yeah, so for the uh, uh, inconsistent theme, that's my, <laughs> let's get my first part. Yeah, so we start from the single levels. Uh, yeah, so the single level is nothing but just uh, some, I, I mean, I just start from the very, uh, very, uh, uh, kind of basic algorithm of level set. Right? I only use a level set um, method. Uh, so the level set function is nothing but the uh, the distance functions to the uh, two phase interface, right? I mean, here in this case, uh, if you are the level set functions are different uh, between the point inside the bubble and outside the bubble, and uh, we use a level set functions to capture the interface. Um, and some people use a VOF, some people use a friend tracking. And uh, if you combine, if you compare this, I mean, man method, two phase flow interface capture method, I mean, they have kind of still, they have advantages and shortcomings. So, one of the advantages of loud set function is that it can dynamically capture the, um, capture the uh, uh, topology change of the interface. That's why we use it. And also, although it kind of have some uh, mass conservation issues, uh, but we can kind of try to improve the mass conservations using some reinitialization techniques, right? 
So yeah, that's the uh, basic ideas. And, uh, and then you can think about it, we already have single level of rear, I mean, single level of rear. And now how can we extend to the uh, uh, multiple levels with AMR? So that's the uh, uh, that's the kind of pipelines that I have designed. So I already have the single level of rigor. Then we can choose the uh, subcycle and non subcycling. Yeah, let, let us stop here for for a second. And for the um, subcycling, uh, it use different time steps for different levels. Why that happens? Because we have the uh, we have a kind of the finer grade cells, right? Finer, finer cells on the, yeah, we have smaller grade cells on the finer levels, which means, uh, which means that we can, we cannot use a very uh, large time step there due to the CFL constraints, right? Uh, but we can use our larger time steps on the coarser levels due to its larger, uh, larger cells. So that's why we use the kind of, uh, different time steps on different levels. So that's subcycling. Uh, and also we have non-subcycling and uh, uh, we use just for you the same time steps which kind of constrained by the finest levels. So these are just uh, two math, uh, two different ways for you to advance your solutions, right? Uh, most of the uh, current papers to the, uh, I think the non-subcycling uh, because it's uh, it might uh, need more work to implement the stop cycling because you have to consider these kind of iteration things. You have to uh, uh, kind of simulate uh, uh, the problems on the course level first, and then move to the finer levels. So there are two cycling modes, and uh, we have the what we call the single level algorithm, and then you can put your single level algorithm in this part in the. Uh, uh, in the uh, middle of this arrows part, right? So, so which means it's very easier for you to extend your algorithms. And uh, so the first feature is it's easier to embed the single level algorithm. And also we have to have some uh, synchronization operations, uh, which includes a lot of things. And let me give you a high level idea of this synchronization operations. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, because we, uh, I mean, because we advance the solutions level by level, which means we uh, we solve. Let's let's think about it this way. Uh, we solve the Poisson equations on the um, uh, courses level, maybe level zero, right? And then we move to the finer levels. So which means we advance the solutions level by level. And one of the results is that it decouples the variables on different levels, right? Because of these decouplings, the solutions on the course levels and the final levels might be different because you do not solve it uh, tightly. You do not couple them tightly. Yeah, so that's why we need some synchronization operations. If you solve the whole flow field tightly using your kind of multi-level, multi-grid solvers, then you do not need to worry about this things. But because of the level by level advancement, we have to use some synchronization operations. Yeah, yeah. Just to think about uh, there are some kind of uh, kind of the uh, corrections after we advance the solutions level by level. And uh, yeah, in, at this point, uh, you see here. Let me give you this as an example. After the level one catches up this the uh, the level zero, then we have to synchronize their their solutions in the time space, right? So similar for level two and uh, level one. Yeah, so we need the synchronizations. And these synchronizations make, uh, uh, makes us comfortable because now the data among different levels are matching with each other. Yeah, so I didn't uh, put a validation case here, but uh, uh, you, you, uh, in, in, in one of my papers, I'm trying to show Without the synchronization, I mean, without refluxing, you will see that the uh, the scalars are not conserved in the uh, whole flow domain, right? Uh, with uh, refluxing, and then you can see that uh, I think the error is uh, uh, nearly to the machine 
uh, machine errors. Yeah. Yeah. So these are just algorithms, and uh, uh, so from a kind of simulation perspective, we first initialize our data, and then based on this data, based on these variables, and then we choose uh, which part should we refine and which part should we derefine, right? And then after the uh, hierarchy of grade are fixed, then we can choose either a subcycling or non subcycling method. So here I just show the subcycling method. And then uh, for each level, we have to, we have used some uh, we use some multi grade uh, mid cycle method to solve the uh, uh, to solve the uh, problems. Um, yeah, so we didn't uh, uh, one of the things we didn't do kind of build the uh, solvers. There are a lot of multi grade solvers you can use in. There are some kind of GMG in the AMREX. There are some uh, outbreak multi grade solvers in, um, I think, in hybrid or in PASC. And then you can use them. And after that, we have to synchronize the data and move to the uh, next generation. So, yeah, all our things are hybrid uh, uh, open MP and MPI parallelization. So, um, yeah, when I first uh, developed this code, I think the AMREX only support the MPI at this stage, at that stage. But now, uh, if you uh, want to play with AMREX, and uh, yeah, and if you uh, if you want to uh, you combine the codes or kind of upgrade codes into the GPUs, I think they already have some features there. Yeah. So yeah. So I will stop here maybe for one minute in case someone has some comments or questions. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I can also I can also finish my talk first, and then just uh, leave uh, more time for 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 us to discuss it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the uh, the the sketch for the inconsistent scheme, but it also applies to the consistent scheme that I will uh, introduce later. Uh, oh yes, there are some uh, some validation cases that I will quickly kind of. Uh, uh, I walk through uh, them. But just, just high, just to uh, uh, highlight the key idea. I mean, this TGV is uh, a very canonical case for the, uh, uh, for, I mean, for the order of convergence validation, right? Uh, we, we, we developed a second order algorithms, and uh, uh, the invasive shear layers is a problem uh, where we do not. Uh, uh, consider or we ignore the uh, uh, viscous effects, so which means the energy should be conserved, and that's our uh, that's our result. And the, you you will see the the energy is conserved. I mean the error is pretty small here. And the, yeah, the right figure is about the uh, the synchronization operations. One of the synchronization operations, what do we call refluxing, and you will see if we have the refluxing that the uh, error is pretty. Uh, I mean, close to zero. So, yeah, just uh, two uh, validation cases. And then we move to the consistent scheme. So, why it's needed? Um, uh, after, after we develop the inconsistent scheme, we want to apply them to some uh, very kind of uh, challenging cases, such as three dimensional stocks breaking waves. And we want to Try to, we want to capture the small droplets or sprays generated by the uh, breaking waves. Uh, and then I find we find that the inconsistent uh, level set mass, pure level set method is not uh, good enough to kind of deal with this very challenging case, especially when the density ratio, I mean, the density ratio is the uh, uh, is the same uh, between the water and the air. So when the density ratio is very large, uh, the simulation is not very stable. And in order to uh, improve the robustness of our solver, uh, we try to uh, con the consistent schemes. But before moving into the algorithm details, we can just... Uh, yeah, I can just show you two movies. 
about the effects of the consciousness games. Right? Uh, so it's, I mean, it's also a very canonical case to validate your uh, robustness or st stable st stability of your solvers. Yeah, so the left part is an inconsistent scheme and the right part is a consistent scheme. So basically there is a, uh, there is a, a, I mean, a circular, we can, maybe it's not water, the circular liquid immersed in the gas because of density, is, uh, uh, density ratio is very large, which means there are kind of small, uh, there are some shares between the interface. If your algorithm are not stable enough, then you will see a lot of these small droplets and your interface become irregular. But with the help of the consistent scheme, you can keep your original kind of surface. Yeah, so uh, what are the consistent scheme? Still, we can, we can think of from, uh, we can think it uh, from the single level. Uh, we have the uh, never stock equations here, and also uh, we have the, uh, uh, scalar equations. And then uh, we use some variables in the previous time step to calculate some advection velocities, right? Then we use the uh, advection velocities to advect not only the uh, momentum part, but also the mass part. So that's the key feature of the uh, consistent scale. So we use the same velocity to advect the, both the momentum and the mass part to make them consistent. Of course, we can also use this uh, advection velocity for, I mean, for scalar, right? And finally, uh, we can move to the next step. So, so for this page, I know there are some formulas, but uh, uh, from a high level, I mean, if you ignore all of these things, but just uh, uh, remember one point is uh, we use the uh, same advection velocities to advect both the momentum and the mass part. So, so when you read some maybe JCP papers or some other algorithm papers, if you see the word of consistent, I mean, with the framework of the uh, uh, multi-phase flow, uh, maybe <laughs> it's highly possible that uh, uh, we talk about the same thing, so same advection scale. And then, of course, the level set functions uh, after its update, it will be used to uh, update the density, right? Because the initialization is applied here, and then to make the mass conserved, we have to update the density. And I I'm trying to compare my work with the some previous with two previous works. Uh, one of the things is that we use a collocated grid. We have the uh, subcycling and non-subcycling, and we are trying to deal with the high density ratio problems. Yeah, uh, just uh, enjoy this these two movies. And for the two-dimensional uh for the left part, uh, you can see that uh, without the kind of this, without the consistency. Uh, the it's the interface between the air and the dam is not very stable. I mean, it cannot smoothly or gradually change the right along with this uh, uh, horizontal kind of bottom interface. But with the help of consistent scheme, you can get these two features. Uh, and the second case is about the uh, situational. Uh, uh, breaking waves. That's the something we want to simulate. Here. So the left part is uh, inconstant scales. Uh, we have the AMR, right? And uh, I mean, uh, in this in this case, we have three levels: uh, the black line, the green lines, and the red lines represents the level zero, level two, level level two, respectively. So the level one, level uh, two will change to capture the interface of the uh, uh, stocks breaking waves. I saw the chat. Uh, yeah, we, we saw the incompressible uh, flow equations, right? Yes. Uh, yes, it's incompressible. 
uh, let me just uh, try to clarify it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's incompressible flow. Yeah, we, uh, and also we use, uh, oh yeah, so that's, yeah, yeah, that's the, uh, that's a very nice question. I think um, maybe I didn't explain it clearly. So in the inconsistent scheme, we do not need to uh, evolve the density, right? That because we have the left side functions, we can use the left side functions to update the density, right? We, we have the fee and we have this half side function that can update the field. So that's the inconsistent scheme. But for a consistent schemes, uh, we, we need to advect the densities because we want to use the same advection velocities to advect the, uh, both the momentum and density part to make them consistent. So that's the key feature of the consistent schemes. Yeah, with, uh, without these uh, uh, same advections, we cannot achieve the robustness or stability of our solver in the high density ratios. Okay. So we, we use the same advection scheme to advect the density part and we get the, here, the, the row M plus one, right? But after that, after one time step, we still use the love set function to update this row M plus one. But uh, it doesn't mean that we do not need to advert the density. Uh, yeah, we still need to advert them, but we also use a love set function to update it. So yeah, I'm not sure if that uh, kind of makes more clear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, feel free to kind of stop me at any time. Yeah, uh, we can go back to this case. And uh, you can see for the inconsistent schemes. So uh, we try to use a dynamic time step size here, but uh, because the inconsistent inconsistencies, the velocity between the water and the air, uh, between the water and air interface is very large. And then we have to use very, very small time step size. And finally, we cannot support it. And then the simulation blows up and all the kind of the droplets are ejected like this. So it's not what we want. But for the consist games, uh, so uh, I think there are some kind of realization issues, but it doesn't, uh, I mean, it doesn't hide the key insights here. Uh, for the consist game, we can have this very kind of smooth kind of transitions of these breaking waves and it can generate um, uh, bubbles or droplets or cylinders underneath the uh, interface. Yeah, so. Yeah, let me try to. Oh, it's based on the, uh, uh, we just use very uh, simple uh, requirement here. It's just based on loud set functions. I mean, as long as you are close to the interface, uh, you are refined. And, uh, and there are, of course, there are some refinement criteria, uh, either from the physical perspective or from the mathematical perspective, right? And uh, uh, yeah, you can easily implement them uh, in that what we uh, use the uh, MREX framework. Yeah. Yeah, hope that helps. Yeah, so there are a lot of cases and uh, there are kind of inconsistent, consistent cases and a lot of things and try to compare it. So the key idea is that uh, you, you can say for the inconsistent case, the norm, the, uh, the dimensionless velocities is pretty large, right? And for a consistent case, it can capture the uh, evolution of the ener energy uh, compared with the previous papers, uh, I think with the uh, look like and the and, and serious papers. Uh, yeah. That's for the, I think for the, uh, uh, soft checkboard. Oh, okay. The checkboard part, uh, run child interpolations. Run child interpolations is, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, we, we, can, we can trace back it to, uh, I'm very earlier. I mean, it's one of the method, uh, uh, it's one of the ways we use in the simple method to kind of correct the uh, 
to try to connect the kind of neighboring pressures and velocities to make them coupled. Yeah, it's a very, uh, it's a very famous run chart interpolate. Uh, it's a very famous algorithm. algorithm. Um, but in our method, we do not use the uh, uh, run chart interpolation. So basically we use some, um, what we call the approximate uh, projection method. Uh, yeah, approximate projection method. So in, one, in the first uh, uh, JCP papers, I have spent a lot of paragraphs to uh, discuss this approximate projection method. So, and uh, explain why it helps for us to avoid that checkboard uh, problem, uh, problems. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you have interest, you can just have a look at that. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a, it's a and so it's another way to deal with the checkboard problems. And uh, it might share some similarities with run child interpolations. Uh, but I think uh, uh, the approximate projection method is more easier for us to implement because, you know, uh, if we use stagger grade, we, we have that exact projection method, right? I mean, the, the predictor character uh, uh, projection method. So the approximate projection method is easier for us to follow these patterns and to solve the number of equations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it depends on the problem for the reinitializations. I mean, for some simple problems, we can reinitialize them maybe after four or five steps. Um, but for some, uh, for some uh, kind of challenge problem, let's say the breaking waves, maybe after one or two time steps, you can reinitialize them. But uh, uh, one of uh, kind of key features, or maybe not key features, one of the uh, uh, since you have to check is uh, your mass, right? After reinitializations, you do not want your mass change a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for these questions. And yeah, we can go to the FSI part. So uh, for the FSI, uh, at this stage, we uh, we have kind of two different mass. The the first one is the uh, the body fitted mass uh, uh, with the structure grade. Uh, and uh, another one is a uh, uh, structured grid uh, with Im immersed boundary master. Uh, we choose the latter ones because uh, for the latter one, we do not need to change the background mesh. And we only need to focus on the uh, interactions between the fluid and solid. Uh, still, a lot of things here, uh, but, uh, uh, but from a high level, the DLM method means the distributed Lagrange multiplier method. Uh, the key point of this method is that it uses a lot of Lagrange markers, or maybe we can call it Lagrange points, to capture the uh, to capture the solid, not only to capture the solid bodies. These points are kind of are distributed in the whole solid body. I mean, not in the not only in the interface of the solid body, but in the whole solid body to try try to capture the dynamics of the. Uh, of the solid, uh, solid bodies. And there are some fluid part and solid part equations and how they can try to, how they can interact, interact with each other. Yeah, I will quickly go through it because the, uh, uh, because the multi-level AMRs uh, of the, uh, uh, of the uh, multi so the multi-level uh, are, algorithms of the FSI problem is pretty similar to the uh, to what we have seen the multi phase flow problems. Um, but there's one thing I want to mention is about this force average. So um, basically you're trying to kind of average your Eulerian forces from fire level to coarse level. That's important because when you try to advance your solutions on the coarse levels, you do not know Right, you you haven't uh, you haven't obtained the information of the solid part from the final level. Then you do not know how how you can correct your flow field. So that's the important that that's a that's an issue. So how we do that? We just average it from the final level to the course level of the previous time steps, and then it uh, gives a very good approximate for the Eulerian forces. So that's a key point, and. Uh, with with these features, and uh, uh, you can check check these papers for uh, for 
kind of uh, more details about how we uh, do this uh, multi-level advancement. Uh, yeah, so some, still some cases, uh, the fish swimming uh, cases. And one thing I want to show here is uh, for the fish swimming case, if you see, we use the AMR, okay. Uh, with the multi-level cases, you can obtain maybe around uh, 16 times uh, <laughs> less computational cost. So that's pretty amazing. I'm pretty sure it will be achieved more at this stage uh, because I don't think uh, I use a very optimized ways to arrange these Lagrange markers. So you can you can get more here if you use uh, uh, if you uh, if you can kind of uh, try to optimize for data structures. Yeah, and also we have wave energy converters. And uh, I think there are only two minutes here, uh, one or two minutes. And the last method is the sharp interface IV. So we use it because we want to avoid the uh, Lagrange markers. And uh, uh, there are also, uh, also some algorithm here. So uh, yeah, I think I can, uh, I can finish my talk by just showing this. So uh, basically we develop a AMR framework which can uh, try to simulate different problems. Uh, I see the rising Bible use the inconsistent schemes and the breaking wave use the consistent schemes. Uh, we can simulate the swimming yield uh, with energy converters use the uh, ELM or maybe the uh, sharp interface IP method. Yeah, yeah, so some future work about the turbulent simulations as well as the uh, uh, combine the AMR with uh, particle simulations. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of stuff that we can do in the future, but I think I can, yeah, I can just stop here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Yadong. Thank you, thanks, Yadong, for this very, uh, very nice talk. And, uh, you know, all everything is, uh, all the information you provide is really, really detailed, all the, my mathematics is fascinating. Um, so uh, I think you already answered the question from Paria. Uh, yeah. So if, if there are more questions from the audience, uh, you can directly ask, unmute yourself and directly ask. Yeah, don't all you can post it in the, uh, in the, you know, the chat channel, I, I can ask, for, ask it for you. So uh, with that, is there any question from our audience? Oh, so um, CC asks the question. So, uh, which software do you do you? By uh, I, I guess do you use this uh, this I'm AMREX? Are you talking about the physics part? Uh, for the physics part, uh, 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 I just inherit some in-house codes from the uh, uh, from from my advisor. And his previous students. So basically, we just com combine the in-house physical modules with the uh, AMREX framework. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Pyrrhia asked questions: or What boundary conditions did you use for your side distance level side function at wall and the open surface? Um. Yeah. So. At the war or open, I mean, at these two different physical boundaries, uh, I think we we didn't do some special treatment. Like for example, for this wave energy converter, right? There are uh, there are waves, incoming waves, which are are generated from the left side, and it uh, damped in the right side. So we, I think, we just use the first order extrapolations for the uh, level set functions. Uh, no special treatment yeah yeah uh so i do not know whether oh yeah yeah honestly i do not know whether this kind of simplifications will influence uh uh will influence the uh, kind of numerical accuracy a lot yeah yeah thank you Any other questions? So, Yadu, did you use PyC to solve this problem? 
I, I, um, I mean, confused. Yeah, uh, I mainly use the, uh, at this stage, I think that I just use the uh, uh, GMG, which are part mm -hmm. of the uh, AMREX package. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the sure. AMREX package provide a lot of interface. Oh, I just okay. use the geometric multigrade solver key first. Oh, geometric, so okay. It's not very robust, especially your grid aspect ratio is very large. So yeah, you can use other kind of more robust solvers, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, so how uh, HHB asked the question, so uh, how to balance each CPU load when MPI is used? So yeah, that's a good question. You can let's let's see this page. If you have four CPUs, maybe our question is, uh, which CPU should uh, control which part, right? <laughs> yeah, because there are three levels. There are different paths. So I think there are some uh, some kind of load load balance algorithm you can choose from AMREX. One of the famous one is the uh, uh, space filling curves. Uh, yeah. One of the famous one is the space filling curves, uh, which are already used in tree based. So, uh, yeah, I the space filling curve is just uh, try to use one line to connect all grid cells and then just uh, chunk it into kind of uh, kind of same amount of lines and are distributed into cores. And you can check more uh, details in their documentations. And for a parallel efficiency of particles, yeah, that's a nice question. And I would recommend you to uh, to see this uh, this this package, what we call the Mfix uh, Mfix uh, X skill skill. I know I have forgotten the name Mfix. Anyway, yeah, try to check this Mfix uh, uh, X skill this this packages, and you will find it uh, can simulate uh, I think the uh, uh, billions of particles, maybe. Yeah, so it's very advanced. So you shouldn't, uh, one of the things, you cannot directly use a uh, load balancing scheme, uh, which are, there are load balance schemes for paralyzing the Eulerian cells, right? But you cannot directly use them to parallel your particles because they are totally different systems. And also one of my, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Zhengping, he has developed some kind of hybrid parallelizations. Yeah, this IJML paper, hybrid uh, parallelization schemes to parallelize, uh, parallelize the uh, particles and the Eulerian variables in different ways so that you can achieve more uh, efficiency. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah, balancing yeah. also, like load balancing is also always a good question for HPC. <laughs> research i guess so nice yeah yes yes yeah. it's okay. i haven't touched that part a, a lot so mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i just uh, try to yeah. introduce others work <laughs> yeah i need to do a, a, a like computer science phd for that uh so uh yang zixuan asked his question that in your algorithm uh that's level one wait for level zero to and to provide boundary condition or in other words when evolving from T to T plus delta T, uh, do level zero and one evolve simultaneously or level zero evolves first as then level one does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks, Shishun. I, I think uh, this page might uh, give you uh, more, more hints. Yeah, so basically we advance uh, level zero first. And uh, because the level one is kind of, you can, you can think about the level one is the, the patches on level one are included in the level zero, right? Then the level zero variables provide some course fine boundary conditions between the level zero and the level one. So which means if you want to fill the ghost cells of the level one, then you have to utilize some of the uh, variables on level zero. So it's not simultaneous solved. That's, that's, that's the key difference. We do not simulate simultaneously solve all levels. So that's the composite level method. Instead, we use a level by level method, which means we solve the level zero first and then level one and then level two recursively, yeah. Yeah, it's then, I think it's then uh, level by, yeah, it's then level by level. Let's see, you have four CPU cores, right? 
um, these four CPU cores, uh, uh, CPU 0 to 1, 2, 3, they kind of participate not only in the level 0 simulation, but also level 1, level 2 simulations, I think. Yeah, I have checked this uh, while doing one of the simulations. So it does mean the course, one of the course only joins the level zero. Yeah, it's as complicated and it's algorithm uh, and the load balance algorithm, uh, I mean, as noted by the host, it's, it's a complex, it's a complex problem, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Jun Junsheng asked a question, uh, does the reflux register consider the corrected fluid pressure after pressure correction step? Uh, it's, it is usually done after, um, after, we, uh, after, after the final level uh, catches up with the, uh, after the final level catches up with the fourth level. You can think about the fluxes, uh, yeah. You can think about the fluxes around some corresponding interface, right? Because the uh, the variables uh, between the bar, let's see the velocity, right? Because the velocities on the course levels are kind of different from the finer levels, so there are some mismatches between these fluxes. If you do not care about it, then it will accumulate along with your simulations, right? So you have to kind of uh, how to say you have to collect this. Uh, uh, Mismatch along the simulations, and then, and then just send them back. So that's a kind of kind of general ideas of the refluxing. Yes, it's for the velocity part, but of, and it's many. Uh, it is many used to update the velocity. Yes. Okay. Last opportunity. Is there any more question from the audience? We got a lot of questions today. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> any. Any more question from the audience? So if not, uh, so let's uh, thank our speaker Yadong again for this really nice, like, you know, hardcore HPC talk uh, today. Um, and- yeah, 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 thank you. Yeah, just one more word. And I mean, feel free to, uh, when, when, if you if you have time to check my work, feel free to send me your message to my 